On today's video, I'm going to show you how I installed a flexible solar panel to the roof of the DIY cargo trailer. So stay tuned. My name is Clint Campbell. If you're not familiar with the channel, I run the Truth in the Stand deer hunting podcast. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how I installed a flexible solar panel to the roof of my DIY mobile hunting rig. This is going to be a little bit of a different video. So I'm going to give you the step by step process. If you've not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button below and the bell notification to make sure you get all the upcoming videos and podcasts. I wanted to install this panel in such a way that I could take it off the trailer and put it back on the trailer whenever I wanted to and also create an insulation layer between the panel itself and the top of the trailer. So in order to do that, a couple things that I was going to need uh, is the corrugated plastic, of course, uh, some bolts, some wing nuts, washers, lock washers, VHB tape, some angle aluminum, and a turn bond the first thing that I needed to do was take that corrugated plastic and put my panel down on top of it and cut out a template uh, to, to use as the insulation layer. And I, I cut mine at pretty much exactly the size, but you can you know cut it just a little bit larger if you would like to, but I try to stay as close to the size of the panel as possible. The corrugated plastic uh, and the uh, angle aluminum that I'll show you here in just a second will ultimately be the base of the structure that I'll use to adhere it the panel to the ceiling of the trailer without drilling or putting any holes in the roof. This next step you don't really need to do. I, I did it just because I wanted the bolts to sink a little bit into the into the corrugated plastic. Uh, but what I used was an X-Acto knife and just kind of cut out the shape of the the bolt. So the bolt head kind of sits and nests nicely into like into the little cutout. Like I said, this is completely you know not not necessarily needed. I just wanted the um, the plastic to mount as flush as I could get it to the to the ceiling of the trailer. The next thing I'm doing here is taking that angle aluminum and then just marking three to four inch kind of pieces of it that I'm going to cut it um, at, at that length. And this is what I'm going to use to run the bolt through and then ultimately kind of wing nut the, um, the solar panel to the plastic and those metal brackets that I'm making. You of course can't use the angle aluminum as it is, so you need to pound it out flat so you have uh, a flat piece of aluminum to to use as uh, your anchor point. So there's six of them for the six grommets that are in the solar panel itself. The one thing that I missed mentioning here is that before or once I got the template cut out of the plastic, I marked where the grommet holes were in the panel itself and then drilled holes through there or through the through the plastic so I have somewhere to put the bolts up through. Uh, the next thing you needed to do, or you don't necessarily need to do it, but I just didn't want anything sharp uh, around the panel and so forth. So I took and clipped the uh, corners of the sharp uh, aluminum once I pounded it flat. And then I took a file and just filed the, the rough edges just to make sure there wasn't anything that, that might cut the panel or, or, or damage anything on the ceiling. All right, we're back making some updates to the trailer. And uh, today we're going to be installing the solar panel on the roof. First thing we need to do is get up there and just kind of clean off the area with some rubbing alcohol where we're going to adhere the, the panel to the roof. We've got some uh, corrugated plastic that we'll use as like an insulation layer in between the, um, the, the roof itself and the solar panel. The reason for that is we want to try to have a way for water to drain whenever it's, uh, when it rains to keep water from uh, kind of gathering underneath the panel itself. Also gives us just a little bit of protection from the heat that'll come off the, off the roof itself because they don't perform quite as well uh, the hotter they get. So just a little bit of a barrier of protection. Also we'll make it to where I'm trying to install it to where I can actually make it really easy to remove. Uh, that way whenever I'm not using it, I can take it off pulling it in my basement or my garage or whatever the case is that way it doesn't get as much wear and tear whenever I'm not actually traveling and using it so we'll go ahead and get started and uh, hopefully this won't take too long. All right so the first thing we're going to do here to start putting this on the roof is kind of map out where it is that you want to you want to put it of course and then I start applying VHB tape which is just super duper industrial strength uh, double-sided double-sided tape and I put that on the bolt head itself and also partially on the corrugated plastic and then kind of pressed it down to make sure it was going to it was going to hold tight. So I did that for all six of the of the bolts that you see on the screen. Um, you might be asking yourself, is this going to be enough to hold this down and, and keep it from lifting off with air? Um, it should be sturdy. We're going to use some Eternabon here in a little bit to kind of help kind of secure things and keep the water from getting underneath the tape itself and weakening it. Uh, but I also have a little trick uh, at the end of the install 
uh, to help keeping uh, that panel securely on the roof uh, and keeping the wind from getting underneath of it to pull it off. And now we'll do a quick check just to make sure everything is lining up. And now we'll start applying the Eternabon to each of the anchor points. Um, only the anchor points, not the entire edges. The reason being is I'm wanting to leave uh, those gaps open so water can escape from underneath it. Because one of the things that will deteriorate a panel is water getting trapped underneath of it, which is another reason why I wanted to add the, the insulation layer. So I've put VHB tape underneath on the panel itself or on the, the plastic itself along with the bolt. And now I'm a turn down those metal pieces that we'll use as the structure for the, the wing nuts to kind of grab a hold of to, to tighten the panel to the, to the roof. And the way I'm uh, applying the turn is I'm uh, cutting a hole in the center of it in a, in a T shaped with some snips. That way I can slip it down over top of the bolt and just making sure that it's covering the, all the uh, metal that, I, that is uh, being used as the anchor point and then also onto the plastic itself. The Eternabon is adding just a little bit more stability to those anchor points. Uh, the main adhesion is, adhesion is uh, happening with the VHB tape, uh, but the Eternabon is also kind of adding this barrier uh, from moisture getting into that VHB tape and potentially weakening that, that, that structure. Once the Eternabon is added to all six of the anchor points, we can go ahead and throw the solar panel on and throw the wing nuts and washer or the washers and wing nuts on, making sure that everything is lining up and uh, should be good to go. The next step we're going to take here is to take a zip tie adhesive um, mount and put a zip tie through it, clip a T in the Eternabon like we did when we were putting the bolts through for the for the solar panel and pull that uh, pull that all through the Eternabon hole. And then we're going to mount that below where we have these excess cables. And what this is going to do is just really kind of keep these cables clean on top of the trailer. That way when we're traveling, they're not flapping around and, and possibly damaging themselves. Then just roll it out, making sure there are no air bubbles in it so it's uh, airtight to the top of the trailer. And then the last step is just kind of zip tie them uh, on and then you'll want to take a, a pair of snips or something and just remove the top piece of that uh, excess zip tie. And this here was the trick that I'd mentioned about keeping the wind from getting underneath the panel and lifting it off. So what I did was take a piece of that angle aluminum, pounded it flat, and then took some VHB tape and VHB taped the one edge of that angle, flattened angle aluminum to the roof of the trailer and then allow it to flap over the edge of the um, solar panel acting as a windbreak, keeping the wind from getting underneath of it. Got the solar panel installed on the roof. So now the next step is going to be to take this wire here. Uh, I just connected it to the solar panel and connected it to the generator to test to make sure that there wasn't any shorts or anything weird with the wire itself. So it, it's all working, so we're all good. So the next step is going to be to run the wire in through the trailer, I'm going to drill a small hole here in the back side of the trailer so I can pull those wires through and then I'm going to hide them in the top corner where there's a gap between the uh, wood paneling and we'll use small little kind of zip tie, uh, adhesive zip tie uh, mounts for those to keep them kind of tucked up, far, uh, tucked up away so you don't see them and then drop them down into the solar generator and then that install should be, should be good to go. Got the solar power installed, panels on the roof, Ran the wiring into the into the cabin and uh, plugged in the solar generator. We've got power to it. It's actually charging my iPhone right now. And then I was just running the um, fan to the heater. So good to go. Have a little bit more stuff to do here just to kind of hide some wires and stuff like that. But overall, like it's it's installed, it's done, uh, which is awesome because that was one of the big kind of last things to do. I think the next or the final big project will be to put the window in. I'm not 100% sure yet where I'm going to exactly put that. I'm thinking I'm going to put it in the door, um, but we'll see. So that's it for today. All right, today we are going to be putting in a shelf and possibly getting to the flooring. I was going to do the window today, but after making or doing some additional measurements, I think the window I have is too small. So I'm going to send it back and get a new window. I'm struggling to find the right size. So we may end up going without a window. So that's that and the floor are the last two big things that I really need to get done so I thought I might be able to knock those out today or I might be able to knock that one out today and then if I do get a window that's the right size I can go ahead and slide it in but uh, I'm going to check on the generator right now uh, see how much power it's drawing from the solar panel since it's getting pretty close to full sun all right let's check and see so we're drawing 121 watts from that panel right now which is pretty good I think when I tested this thing 
the most I ever drew was about 130 something. Um, but that didn't have the length of cable that I'm running now to get from the panel to the solar generator. So you lose a little bit there due to impedance. So not too bad. So we got a shelf in. Uh, I was going to put a second shelf in that I was going to put underneath the bed near another power strip. But I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to find some like bags or something that I can just hang on the walls that I can slip like a a phone in next to the charge next to the power strip and then maybe you know one that's big enough for like a laptop that way they don't take up floor space and they'll you know be collapsible and only take up as much space they need now since I can't put the window in I went and got the stuff I need for the flooring and I'm gonna go ahead and put the floor in uh, which was like one of the last big kind of projects I needed to get done uh, it didn't take very long so we're pretty much wrapped up for the day the last thing I need to do as I mentioned other than a few odds and ends is put a is put the window in um, floor, I just use regular peel and stick laminate flooring, um, kind of, kind of looks like tile. It looks like wood and I kept it all wood. I really just went with the cheapest version that they had. Would have been nice to have a little bit of a breakup since the walls are kind of that wood, wood kind of feel, but, uh, overall I'm happy with it. It'll be easy to keep clean. It'll hide dirt and mud, uh, cause I'm sure there'll be a lot of that in here during hunting season. So I'm going to call it a wrap for today and then we'll have to order the right size window. Um, and hopefully get that installed here in the next few weeks. Last few odds and ends to kind of tie up. It will be a toolbox on the hitch, uh, get one of those in and, and place that on there. And then a spare tire, uh, carrier along with a spare tire. And then that'll be it. This thing will be uh, roadworthy and ready to go.